we used to have one foot firmly outside the industry until this happened. Yeah. Chuggy, we had some amazing adventures. I remember the night you signed us up, I was sitting there and I was scared to say no. And your henchman, instead of putting a cigar in my mouth, he put a joint in my mouth. And I sat there and he lit it. He said, so that's it then. And I was like, yes. And then in 1981, Chuggy organized our first tour of Tasmania and aviation was a little different in those days. And it was an old, it was an old World War, World War II, sorry, sorry, Chuggy. It was an old World War II aeroplane. And the gear, and in those days, bands carried these colossal PAs with them. It was all strapped down one side, and the band was down the other side. And when we took off, the door opened. And we're looking at Melvin through an open door, and the gear broke free and was running around. I had a four-way bin rolling towards me. And Chuggy, you know what you said? You said, you said, Michael Chug killed in airplane crash. The church were there too. <laughs> no, I bet you don't. On the same tour, we played a gig in Launceston. And as we exited the venue, a young Taswegian was lady was standing there with her bosoms bare, and she said, look, you mainlanders, genuine Tazzy tits. <laughs> and Marty walked over and went, cheers. <laughs> she would be a grandmother now, that woman. <laughs> On the same tour, our front of house man punched an overzealous reporter in the eye and gave him a big black eye and he stood right in front of me all night crying. <laughs> that was very daunting. We've had, uh, we've had loads of marvellous adventures in the music business and um, I should have some poignant memory um, for each and all of you like sailing in yachts in the Mediterranean with Michael Gdinsky and stuff like that. But my mother's here so all of those anecdotes are no longer applicable. <laughs> I'm still amazed by Richard Wilkins' hair. <laughs> I am. I'm sitting there, I'm looking at it from behind, and I'm thinking he looks like a schoolboy from behind. It's so thick and fluffy and blonde. It's amazing. And I can remember when you were Richard Wilde. Like, was it, like, Wilde, or were you, like, Oscar Wilde? Anyway, um, look, um, I'm, I like to thank, we've been, we've been kicked off all the best record companies in Australia. We've been kicked off all the best publishing companies. Um, and look, uh, this is a great honour and um, I hope our foot is still in and out of the, um, in and out of the, what is it? What do we, we in and out of the grave? And um, thank you very much for this great honour. I know some of my friends here want to thank some people, so um, thank you very much. The night the church took over the Australian music industry. Okay, okay, sorry. I, there's just there's three big thank yous for me, uh, for all of us. The first one is our most recent champion in this country, Mr. Joe Segreto has been absolutely amazing. We've got some incredible things. He's really handsome too, which because you don't meet too many handsome agents, but Joe Seg is a really handsome guy, okay? Yeah. I just had to add that. So, so champion number one, Mr. Joe Segreto for us. Champion number two, not in any order, is our American friend and patron, Mr. Kevin Keller, who none of you will know, who has made the whole last... 12 years totally feasible on every level and continues to be involved with, with us, which is fantastic. And of course, the biggest champion who's not here tonight is the guy whose massive shoes I jumped into, which is Mr. Richard Plug. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to thank Chris Gilby for uh, discovering, us, discovering us and uh, helping a lot of other discovering bands. Discovering us. I did say that. <laughs> we were off the coast and he, he sort of was... He'd appreciate that. 
and uh, he um, also helped a lot of other Australian bands in the industry, you know, including In Excess in their um, uh, takeover of the world. And I agree with Steve so much in the Australian music industry, that, um, the bands and the industry that supports them that succeeded around the world, actually. And um, obviously we have to mention our families, of all, they define us as well. Um, and John, Johnny Young, thank you for the real thing and Molly Meldrum's work on it that um, kept us inspired to stand aside of just what might have been expected in... He you know. he, like last year, last year he came in our rehearsal and said, listen to this. I said, what's that? He said, I've got the chords to the real thing. I still can't I remember them though. They're really hard to remember. Thank you very much. I wonder if anybody thinks that Steve has managed to demystify us. <laughs> After that, it was in the, in the prelude. <laughs> We've worked so hard to be aloof and enigmatic. <laughs> Aloof no more. <laughs> All ruined in 15 minutes. <laughs> after 30 years. Um, I'd just like to thank all the same people that these, go these guys have. Um, but we were dropped and kicked off so many labels that we had to form our own. But, um, and uh, we still won't pay ourselves any fucking yeah, royalties. Still don't get paid. Um, but we really want to thank um, EMI, Vicky Vogiatsoglu at EMI, big supporter of the church, Mark, Matt Dunleavy at Pier, Sab Chase at MGM, who helped us put our own label together. And um, uh, thanks very much. It's pretty strange for me because I'm from Liverpool. Thank you. <laughs> one more person. Uh, one more person. I'd like to thank God for giving us so much unbearable talent. <laughs> Give that man his own show.